Ey shalom shalom akim ya bashmel shabrak dam bashun kakudas kolo ya bashmel shai kolo ya bashmel shai double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone shalom to the akim out there in the elect that's the men women and children selected to make it out of here for the coming destruction on the brothers and yon all of the dc camp coming out of, coming at you all right salakia coming at you with another keep in mind video it's going to be called keep in mind Japhet is not of the tribe of naphtali all right Japhet is not of the tribe of Naphtali, all right? In the West, <clears throat> mentioned in Deuteronomy 33, is talking about a direction in this case, all right? And I'm going to get that. That's not going to be the whole title, but basically Japheth is not the tribe of uh, Naphtali. I'm going to get into it. But before I get into that, of course, as you see on the screen, I'm going to read this. This is uh, John 21 and 15. It says, So when they had dined, Yahweh saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said, He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. All right. Verse 16, he saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Yahweh shall I say unto him, feed my sheep. All right. Because three times is, is what? Understanding. All right. When you know in the scriptures, anytime three th things happen three times, is dealing with understanding. All right. And he said, what? Feed my lambs. Now, lamb is a baby sheep. All right. It's a baby sheep. So who, who are the sheep? When he says, feed my lambs, it's talking about the nation of Israel, man. Israel, we're the sheep, we're the scattered sheep, all right, all right, we're the lost, we're the lost sheep, and scattered sheep, all right, and I say that because uh, you have, I remember I said Japheth is not uh, the tribe of Naphtali, but you do have, uh, what, some of our people mixed in that look like Japheth, why, because we've been scattered abroad, as a matter of fact, let me get that, you know, something basic real quick, all right, for our people, all right, because I love the Lord, therefore I want to feed the sheep the right way, all right, and I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show everybody the um, the inspiration of this video and why I went into it in just a second, all right, this is James 1 and 1, it says, James, a servant of the Most High and of the Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, and you know, as plain as that scripture is, it packs a powerful punch, man, he said, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, all right, greeting, all right, because the tribes have been scattered, man, all right, this is actual prophecy, all right, right here in itself, all right, because um, during the times of what, the old, I mean, the New Testament, around the times of that, that time frame, all right, guess what? You only had um, three major tribes that were still over in the land of Israel, man, all right? You had, um, right, because this is James, right? So James was around the time of Yahweh Shai, obviously, okay? And they were during the time of the Romans, right? Now, during this particular time period, you had, what, uh, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. You did have um, a couple of the other tribes stay behind, but not that much. Why? Because of prophecy. All right? And guess what? The other tribes were, what? They went into the Western Hemisphere. All right? It said, which is scattered abroad greeting. And then, even later on after that, all the tribes would be scattered abroad around the rest of the earth anyway. All right? So, you do have people that look like um, uh, Japheth. That are actual Israelites, man, that are scattered abroad. All right. And let me, as a matter of fact, let me go ahead and get you the inspiration for this video right here. All right. Because you have Israelite groups out there, of course. They say that when they go down the 12 tribes uh, chart, they say that um, Naphtali um, are the Israelites. All right. And this is why they said, all right. We are the people of the Polynesian Island. Deuteronomy 33:23. See that? Now the thing is, you know, I believe those uh young uh kids right there are children. I believe they are Israelites, all right? But they say of the Polynesian Islands. Deuteronomy 33 and 23. And why? Because they've been taught that 
by what? Israelite groups out there, man. Other Israelite groups out there that don't have an understanding of it, all right? But let me get the scripture, all right? And why I believe that they are Israelites, all right? Number one, they're saying Elashua and Kodash, and they believe that they're Israelites, okay? All right, and this is our Romans 8 and 16. How many of, of the other nations actually believe that? And are saying Elashua and Kodash, and right? have a little flavor. You, you know, they had a little, you know, flavor to them, all right? Being kids, man. All right, this is Romans 8 and 16. It says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Now, when you go into uh, the Spirit, the Spirit is also what? The Spirit of uh, truth, the, um, the comforter, all right? All right, the comforter and it's the Spirit of truth. So when you look at it, the Spirit itself or the truth itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. And the truth is that what? We've been scattered abroad, man. All right, we've been scattered abroad. And also the scripture that we always like to use to have a dual meaning. All right, this is Matthew 5, verse, um, let me see what it says. You are, I know it's around, yeah, Khan, it's always before the light. This is Matthew 5 and verse uh, 13. You are the salt of the earth. But if mm -hmm. the salt have lost its savor or flavor, right, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. We always like to use the other salt of the earth like we give the earth flavor. Israelites, what? We give the earth flavor. What? We've been made to be put above all the nations on the planet earth, man. All right. So obviously we're above all the nations and everything. Okay. But also this, when it says you're the salt of the earth, it's talking about the disciples. Okay. All right. The disciples to soon turn to apostles. Look, uh, we got a job to do. All right, like as a, as a uh, disciple and a prophet of the Lord, the Lord set up to be a man of the Lord and a prophet. We ought to go out and teach to the nation of Israel about Him, about Yahweh Shai, to get back into the good graces of the Most High Yahweh. That's our job. If we don't do that, if the salt had lost its savor, where will shall it be salted? Why, if if you don't do your job as a prophet, what good are you? you you're thenceforth good for nothing to be cast out and be destroyed like everybody else that don't believe, man. All right. So we always use that scripture for a dual meaning. You're the salt of the earth. We give the earth flavor. Okay. All right. And going back into this video, you see, they said Deuteronomy uh, 33, 23. All right. And when you go to uh, Deuteronomy, all right, 33 and 23. All right. Let me see. Salakia. When you go to Deuteronomy 33 and 23. All right, this is De Deuteronomy, the 33rd chapter, also gives out prophecy concerning the tribes. It's not just Genesis 49. It's various other ones that gives out um, prophecies, all right, that will let you know um, where our different tribes have been scattered. It helps. It gives you clues, all right? It's not, remember, it's not just Genesis, the 49th chapter. I believe you have... Uh, um, Deuteronomy the thirty third chapter. You also have uh, what is it? Uh, first, First Chronicles where it talks about uh, Gad and Reuben and Manasseh. Okay, you have various scriptures that give you clues to who the tribes are, and one of them being Deuteronomy thirty three and twenty three. It says, um, "And of Naphtali, right? Because that's the focus of this lesson. And of Naphtali, he said, O Naphtali, satisfied with favor and full with the blessing of the Lord, possess thou the west and the south." Now, a lot of Israelite groups teach that that's, that must be talking about the Hawaiians and things of this nature because they believe when you go far west and south, it's talking about the islands. And another thing they believe is when you go into the word. Now, well, what I want to say before I click on the scripture in the blue letter and get the uh, strong coordinates and everything, all right, I always like to say, and brothers know this within the camp, there's such thing as, um, I always like to say, there's the word definition and then there's the scriptural definition, all right? The scriptural definition is the most important. Now, the word definition can back up the scriptural definition. Great. That's fine. It's beautiful. But the scriptural definition is the most important. What do I mean by that? When you ask people, what does sin mean, according to the scriptures? They'll say a whole bunch of things. Missing the mark, this and yada, 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 all right? But when you go to 1 John 3 and 4, it says, for sin is the transgression of the law. You see that? Sin is the transgression of the law. 
So the scriptural definition actually proved what sin was. Now, when you go into the word sin, as a matter of fact, let's go there. We in the spirit of study just talking about, just go to it. First John three and four, right? It says, whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law for sin is the transgression of the law. Now, when you go to the word sin itself, all right? All right, Hamartia or Hamartia. Let's get what he, how he says it. Strong's G 266, Hamartia. Hamartia. Hamartia, okay? Now it says to be without a snare, uh, like to be without a sharing, to miss the mark. That's why a lot of Christians say to miss the mark. To err, be mistaken. To miss, wander from the path of uprightness and honor, to do or go wrong. To wander from the law of God, violate God's law of sin. Now those are good, but you have to go into it. To wander from the law of the Most High. Now that is the accurate one. That matches more so the transgression of the law. To miss or wander from the path of uprightness when you got to go into it. Uprightness is what? Dealing with the law, statutes, commandments. If you miss a wonder that from that, you're not going in the right way, i.e. you're transgressing from what? The law, statutes, commandments, which is sin. All right? So you'll have different definitions, all right? But to be more precise, the scriptural definition is best, okay? Another example of that, what I like to go to, is Jonah, okay? All right? I'm going to go to the Old Testament, and I'm going to go to um, Jonah, okay? And I'm going to go to Jonah. It could be the second chapter. No, I believe it's the first chapter, but it's okay. This is Jonah 1. Because he says, out of the belly of hell, right? Now, now this is, yeah, it's Jonah's second chapter. Because he got taken into the giant fish's um, mouth. But it talks about it, okay, in Jonah's second chapter. All right, this is Jonah. 2 and verse 1. Then Jonah prayed unto Yahweh shot his power out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. See, he cried by reason of his affliction because he was in great distress. And he heard me out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. Now, here's another example of why I say the scriptural definition is more important than the word definition. Because we know that Jonah was swallowed up by a giant sea creature, a.k.a. a giant fish, right? Now, when you go um, to Jonah 2 and 2, all right? Now, he said, out of the belly of hell, all right? Now, we know that scripturally, he was in, a, he was in affliction, as we read earlier, because he was swallowed up by a fish. Of course you'd be in great affliction if you were in the belly of a giant sea creature, man. Of course you would be in affliction. That's hell. But he said hell. Now when you go into the word hell itself, it says sha a wall. Sha a wa and Allah. So sha a wall. Look at it. Grave, hell, pit, the underworld, wicked, sent there for punishment. Okay. And that's when they start going into uh the actual uh, hell, which that's going off, all right? When you look into the Strong's definition, it says, Hades or the world of the dead, as if a subterranean retreat, including its accessories and inmates, grave hell pit, all right? So when you go into hell, it's actually grave hell and pit, all right? The grave, you see it as the grave and you see it as the pit, because that's what it is. It's a lower state, and it's also what... Uh, Actually, actually underneath the ground. Now, shot a wall, an actual grave or pit, something that's underground, that's not inside of a fish's belly, man, or a giant sea creature's belly, all right? Even though the word says grave or pit, an actual grave and a pit is not inside of a fish's belly. So, i.e., what, it, what is meant by when he says... When he says, out of the belly of hell cried I, he's going back to what he said earlier in the same uh, scripture. Uh, I cried by reason of mine affliction. You see? Because he was, that's that's a terrible place to be, man. All right? He was in a low estate, all right? Being in the, uh, the, the belly of a giant sea creature. So this is an example where even though the word itself means grave or pit, the scriptural definition lets you know that it's not talking about a grave or pit. It's talking about what? Him being in a lower state. All right. So more importantly, the scriptural definition is better than what? 
the word definition, even though sometimes the word definition backs up the scriptural definition. All right. Now, going back into. Um, let me go back into Deuteronomy because I want to have this up. Deuteronomy 33 and 23. All right. It says, uh, and of Naphtali, he said, O Naphtali, satisfied with favor and full with the blessing of the Lord, possess thou the west and the south. Now, this is what a lot of those other Israelite groups are teaching. When you go to the word west, all right, because they'll look this up too. But guess what you'll see here? West, the Hebrew word there is yum, yum. Now, when you see it, it says sea, Mediterranean sea. Red Sea, Dead Sea, Sea of Galilee, Sea in general, right? It says general, mighty river, the sea. It says seaward, west, westward, all right? And also, you, when you look at the word sea, it comes up as sea, west, westward, west side, sea frame, men, south, and western. It comes up as many different things, all right? Strong's definition, all right? It says a sea, a large body of water, Mediterranean Sea, Sometimes a larger river or artificial basin, locally the west or rarely the south sea. All right. It's a seafaring man, uh, shore, south, west, as in it says west, urn, side, or ward, as in western, west side, or ward. Okay. So not only is this word talking about sea, it's also talking about a direction west. All right. As you can see, mostly it's talking about the direction west. Now, these, what they're teaching is. When you go all the way to the west and to the south, obviously you must be talking about um, the islands, which that's not the case. All right. Actual Japhites, actual Hawaiians and Polynesians, and things of this nature, they're not Israelites. But remember, I said you do have some of us scattered amongst them. That's already been covered. So you have some of our people that look like them. All right. All right. That they're actually over there. And that's OK. They just look like another nation. OK. But the actual people that go back to Japheth, the line of Japheth, they are not the Israelites, man. All right. And let me let me get a couple of things, because right here we have an example of the word definition, as you can see, C. And that's what they're going off of. But we can't stop there. All right. Because what else is this word used in? All right. It says West. Right. And when you look it up, the word there, C, you see the word Yum. Now, let's go to Genesis 1. This is Genesis 1 and verse 10. It says, and the Alahayim called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good, or the Alahayim saw that it was good. Now, when you go to the seas, I put emphasis on seas. It says, what is that? Yum. And when you go there, all right, it says sea. All right, so you have an example where what? That word yum does mean sea. All right, let's go to another one. Uh, Genesis 1 and 22 and Allah and blessed them saying be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the fowl multiply in the earth. So when you go to um, seas, the word that once again is yum. And you know that's actually talking about sea. Why? Because you can read it from the scriptural definition. It says fill the waters in the seas. All right. And then it says, um, when you go back uh, before that, and Allah Hayim created great wells and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and Allah Hayim saw that it was good. So the scriptural definition in its entirety lets you know that that's actually talking about actual water and seas. All right. So let me get examples of when that west, all right, is actually talking about west, westward, all right, west side. It's things of this nature as we saw, as a direction, all right? Now, this is, um, I'm going to go to Joshua, and bear with me, Joshua 8, the 8th chapter, all right? This is Joshua 8 in verse, um, it's, trying, it's kind of good to read all of it to get the understanding, but I'm going to jump straight to the point, all right? This is Joshua 8, verse 9. Joshua therefore sent them forth, and they went to lie in ambush. And abode between Bethel and and I or Ai, all right, on the west side of Ai, but Joshua lodged Slaki, but Joshua lodged that night among the people. That said, on abode on the west side, 
have I. Okay. Now, before we even click on that word, all right, before we even do it, all right, let's go to I map. Let's go to I on the map. The I map Bible. That's even better. All right. Now, you see this? You have Bethel and you have I. They have right there because it's generally, they have a question mark because it's kind of like within that area, okay? Because you have Bethel on the, on the left side and you have I right there, all right? Now, when you look at it, what C is right there, right? It's no C. So, when it says the west of I is actually talking about the actual direction, okay? You see? It's actually talking about an actual direction, all right? So, when we go back here, it says... Uh, verse 9, Joshua therefore sent them forth, and they went to lie in ambush and abode between Bethel and Ai mm -hmm. on the west side of Ai. But Joshua lies that night among the people. It's not talking about on the sea of Ai. Sea side of Ai is talking about the west, an actual direction. Okay, an actual direction. All right. Let me see. It says, and Joshua rose up early in the morning and numbered the people and went up, he and the elders of Israel before the people of Ai. And all the people, even the people of war that were with him, went up and drew nigh and came before the city and pitched on the north side of Ai. So now it's another direction. Now there was a valley between them and Ai. So now that's another direction. Okay. All right. Now let me, um, because you had the west and now you have the north. Now let me go to Psalms 107. All right. And one, it says, oh, give thanks unto the Yahweh Shemuel Shai, for he is good. For his mercy endure forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he have redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. And when you look up the word west, of course, what is it going to say? All right. Well, in this particular one, it says south. It's Salakia for that. For this particular one, it says south. All right. Which that's rarely that it says south right there. Let me see. Now let's get this for edification anyway. Because this is a direction. Setting place west, westward. Westward, okay? West, because that's also a direction as well. And that's not the one we were looking for, but it's all good. It's all edification, all right? Because I'm still going to get another one where it talks about a direction. This is Genesis 13 and verse 14, all right? And that was a rare occasion when the actual sea was looked at as the south, all right? See, the word yum, all right, was, where it says, you know, see as in, in the definition, but the word yum, the Hebrew, was actually looked at as the south in that particular uh, case, all right? As we read in the definition before. Now, this is Genesis 13 and 14. It says, And the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward, and westward, for all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. All right? And when you go to this this right here, when you go to where it says northward, southward, eastward, and westward, what? Westward says yum. Now, was it talking about an actual sea where Abraham was looking at? No, it was talking about the land. All right? So that was an actual direction. Okay? It was a direction. It was not talking about sea. But those guys, when they look at that word sea, I mean, uh, when they look at the word uh, uh, west, they'll look up the word and say sea, and say sea is talking about the actual sea or the ocean. And when you go all the way over um, in south, you, you must run into the islands, man. You go all the way to the sea in south. And, and you know what? That's another funny part, all right? Because even if you were to look up um, the word west, and you see the word yum, and you see sea, if you believe it's sea at that point, and it's no longer direction, how do you know to go all the way to the west and down? Because at that particular moment, to them, west means sea. So it doesn't mean west as in direction. It just means sea. So it'll, mean, it'll say sea and then south and down. So it'll just be sea and down. So how do you know it's even talking about those islands? See? Even on that point. All right? Now let me get um, Genesis 12 in verse uh, 8. And it says, and he removed, matter of fact, verse 7, and the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. 
And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and high on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. See? All right. See? And it said Bethel on, on the west and high on the east. It didn't say Bethel on the sea because Bethel's not on the sea. All right. So when you go to that word, it said Bethel on the west. What? West has the same word yum there. So you got to know when to discern when it's actually talking about a direction or the sea. Hence, that's why I said the, the scriptural definition is more important than the word definition. All right. Plain and simple, man. All right. But going back. To those Jakes that I believe they're Jakes, even though they, they believe they're Polynesians and saying that they're Neftali, all right? Well, they believe they're of the Polynesians, uh, believing that they're from the tribe of Neftali, all right? We were scattered abroad, like I said earlier, man, like the scripture said earlier. This is Revelation uh, 7 and verse uh, 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, talking about of Israel, man. Remember, where is the sands of the sea, all right? That's another set of scriptures that has the word uh, yum there. All right. Sands of the sea. Well, that's talking about the actual sea in a parabolic form because we're as the sands of the sea. It's, it's, it's tons of sand in the sea. All right. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man can number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. All right. That great mo multitude which no man can number of all nations. Now, it was Israelites of all those nations, man. All right? Israelites, okay? Not saying that um, each nation can be an Israelite. No, it says Israelites of those nations because to be an Israelite means that you come of the seed of Jacob, okay? You come from one of the tribes coming of the seed of Jacob. That's plain plain and simple, man. Because all when you go to Genesis, the 10th chapter, all the other nations, they have their own table of nations. They have their own progenitor, okay? All right? And I'm going to go to, um, of course, brothers, know this, Isaiah. And if you don't know, now you know. Lord willing, you know. This is Isaiah 11 and verse um, 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. Because the first time he recovered the remnant, he recovered all Israel out of Egypt. And the second time he's going to recover the remnant of his people of Israel, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt. And from Patros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the Isles, islands like of the sea. All right? Because you're going to actually have some people that are in the different islands of the sea. All right? The different islands of the what? The sea, it says, the sea there is Yum. Now, in this case, it's actually talking about the islands within the sea. It's not talking about the different islands of the west. You see? You see how do you see how do you have to... Uh, Learn when to, uh, to discern. It's like it from being jumping up in my words. But like I was saying, you see how you have to um, know when to discern when it's a direction and when it's talking about the actual sea. It's very important. All right. This is uh, we, we've been scattered abroad. All right. We've been scattered abroad. So, yes, you will have Israelites that look like other nations, man. And I believe those children are what Israelites and their parents are Israelites, man. All right. Well, at least the father. OK. And this is. um. Jeremiah um, 30 and 10, it says, Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, said the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee, or deliver thee. All right. Though I make a full end of all nations, whether I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee. But I will correct thee in measure and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. All right. But it says what? That he will what? He said, though I make a full end of all the nations, whether I have scattered thee. You see, so the Lord scattered Israel amongst the other nations, man. All right. And we were scattered. All right. And last ones I'm going to close out on is Ezekiel 11 and verse uh, 16. And it says, um, it says, um, son of verse 15, son of man, thy brethren, even thy brethren, the men of thy kindred and all the house of Israel, holy are they unto whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, get you far from the Lord 
Unto us is this land given in possession? Therefore, say, thus saith the Lord power, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and, I, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Okay? And it says, Therefore say, thus saith the Lord power, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered. And I will give you the land of Israel. And that's going to happen. Israel is going to be uh, uh, delivered, saved from Yahweh al Shai. And not all Israel, remember, when you go back to Isaiah, it's going to be the remnant. All right, so uh, Israel is going to be uh, delivered and put back into the land of Israel. So you're going to have people that look like other nations that are actual Israelites. All right, and that's not a problem. But the problem is saying that the actual people of that place, the Jaff, the actual Japhites, which we know as the Japhites, the problem is saying that they're of the tribe of Naphtali. That's not true. The tribe of Naphtali, when you go into Deuteronomy 33 and 20, remember, um, when you go back, let me go back to it, Deuteronomy 33 and 23, when you go back to it, it says, in Naphtali, he said, O Naphtali, satisfied with favor and full with the blessing of the Lord, possess thou the west and the south. That's talking about the direction. I right, remember, they were part of the 10 tribes, all right, that went over into what? The Western Hemisphere, all right? And with over in the Western Hemisphere, all right, North, Central, and South America, they went all the way to the West and down to the South. And that will put you in South America, where you would put around uh, uh, Argentina to Chile in that area, man, all right? It's plain and simple, all right? So with that, of course, I hope uh, Akim out there have been edified. We have, we have brothers and sisters out there that have been scattered abroad that look like other nations that are coming back to their nationality, which that's fine. But the actual nations where we have been scattered, they are not Israelites, man. Plain and simple. With that, call Allah, Yahweh, Shemel, Shabbat, Shemel, Kodash. And as always, to the elect, I say double shalom.